what the most powerful force in the world is? You mean friendship? Friendship for sure. Riley, are you pregnant? No, I'm fucking sick, you bitch. Sweet home on the radio. What do things have to change? Lately, there has been some tension that we've seen between you and Disney star Miley Cyrus. Couldn't fit this award in my bag, but I did find this. So thank you guys very much. Yeah! people say it's a little too racy for a 20 year old no i haven't even partied in a while haters are gonna hate but the haters are also gonna click on your youtube video to watch it so i don't really care you help me break the record even if you were watching just to hate on me and now i hold a record actually so extra oh my god who do you know that's doing it like me not the tiara doing its own little thing can you see it oh she's glistening i'm a hundred percent that bitch what is up guys and welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be starting a new series oh my god the sun is beaming on me i'm going to be starting a new series on my channel i'm going to be talking about a bunch of different artists a bunch of different celebrities who have been scrutinized by the media who have been receiving backlash since the get-go plenty of people want to talk about i do love me some pop culture and i'm a pop culture whore i'm not gonna lie to you i'm very nosy and apparently you are too which is why you clicked the video today we're going to be talking about Mali cyrus fun fact that's actually not her real name oh not me dropping bombs on you already. Yeah, definitely gonna learn some interesting facts about Miley Cyrus. We're also gonna find out why the hate train came along and why a lot of people really didn't like Miley Cyrus at one time. We're starting off strong with a good old Miley Cyrus episode. Plenty of things that I actually learned whilst researching and I have an entire script right in front of me. Never really do this, but today, why not? Make sure you guys go and grab a snack. What do I have with me today? I don't have a snack with me today. <laughs> A bitch was hungry and decided to eat her Big Mac off of camera. Today I'm drinking this Innocent Smoothie. I'm trying to be more healthy. I'm saying that, but it added tons of sugar in it. Anyway. <laughs> grab some food, put your phone in do not disturb mode because it's time for Keisha. Subscribe if you guys are new here. Turn on the bell because YouTube has not been notifying people. YouTube's been very selfish. I'm not meeting eye tie at the moment. You can search for me if you have to. I do post every other day. So just know that if you feel like I've been gone for a very long time, chances are you just haven't been notified. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. You guys can be in my DMs. Tell me what episodes you guys want to see next. Also just follow me because I feel like I take really good pictures. And I was also hacked at 37k and I'm trying to get back to that slowly but surely. So help a good sis out. Today's charity is Keisha apparently. We home on the radio. What do things have to change? Miley Ray Cyrus, originally born as Destiny Hope Cyrus, is an American singer-songwriter born on November 23rd, 1992 in Tennessee. Sweet nibbles. Miley legally changed her name to Miley Ray Cyrus in 2008. You may be wondering why she decided to pick the name Miley. So the reason why she went for the name Miley is because she used to smile a lot as a child, so the parents and everyone else was around with it. And like I mentioned earlier, she legally changed it. Miley's style of music typically varies between pop, country and just pop. Miley Cyrus genuinely cannot be tamed, literally. She can't be boxed and I feel like we've seen her step into different styles. Over the past couple of years she stepped even into hip hop and rap. She had a little moment with French Montana, Will I Am, Wiz Khalifa, Mike Will Made It. That was specifically within 2013. She's also obviously done country. In her recent album Plastic Hearts, which was released in November of 2020, you see her step more into like the synth style, the pop rock. We go. You never know what's to come from Miley Cyrus and I think that's what's always been intriguing about her. I think she's gonna stick to this thing because maybe she sold the most amount of albums or, or singles here in this category, but she's always willing to one-up it. And for me, my favorite era of Miley's will always be bangers. We're gonna touch upon that very shortly because that is a monumental moment as to what sparked this hatred and this fuel for people when it came to Miley. 2013 was a time to be alive. I was 13 years old. I was probably in boy drama. I was probably worrying about someone who God sure as hell wasn't worrying about me. Probably trying to work out which between the two of you guys are my fake friend. I was doing a mezzanine. I can't even lie. What were you doing back in 2013? Let's talk about the spark of Miley's success because it's very important to, you know, figure out where everybody started from because everybody starts somewhere. Let's talk about what catapulted her success. Hannah Montana series was aired on March the 24th, 2006 and Miley was just recently celebrating the anniversary of Hannah Montana. Miley has been doing a lot on Instagram if you guys have been following her within the last year or so you can see she's been posting a, 
every day is a throwback for her <laughs> every single day she's posting throwback pictures of herself and she's you know captioning stuff in reference to hannah and the disney days and i think that's super cool but i also do think the conspiracy behind that is the reason why she's posting those pictures now is because what was my conspiracy again Hannah Montana the series was aired on March the 24th, 2006 as a lead in return to High School Musical. Now whilst researching that, I was thinking like, wait, what? Hold on a second. Sweet nibblings. <laughs> and received 5.4 million viewers on the first episode alone. According to the US television ratings, this brought the record for the highest rated premiere in the history of Disney Channel as of 2006. To generate 5.4 million viewers in the United States only. Now we have Disney Channel here in the UK, so bitch, if you accumulate that worldwide, God only knows how much viewers are watching with that first episode. I think, you know, everybody had loved High School Musical. Everybody loved a good musical moment. I mean, you know, the writers at the time were killing it. I don't think there is a Disney musical that's cringe. I can't think of it. I feel like every single writer really executed and did it. Like it was, it was PG, it was still cute, but it was also like, you know, a little bit sassy at the same time. When it came to Hannah Montana, you get the limo out front. Ooh! Whoever wrote that, that lived to be Miley's thing. Get the limo out front. You just knew the lyrics because it was groovy, it was catchy, and it wasn't too long as well. Of course, she had the help and the impact of people who were famous within her family, such as her father being Billy Ray Cyrus, like come on, a country king. Also Dolly Parton, I mean, excuse me. I'm not really a big fan of country, but even I know who she is. Get with it or get gone. Jolene. Obviously had the help of her family, but I would say that, you know, talent is talent at the end of the day, and if it's meant to be, then it's meant to be. How is it that this all worked out well for Miley Cyrus, you might be asking? You're either an outstanding actor, or you're an outstanding actor with connections within the industry. Now, you guys have probably heard that quote, it's who you know. I definitely do believe that, especially in today's day and age, you can have, like, absolutely no talent but if you know somebody within the music industry or within the you know theater industry they can with connections they can put you on sometimes all you need is just a connection so obviously again miley her father being billy ray cyrus her godmother being dolly she probably took advantage of that and i think a lot of people would in that situation miley cyrus having a famous father and godmother definitely increased the likeliness of her being heard and seen when miley was only eight years old she actually moved to canada because her father was you know starring out in a show and she was i think she appeared in one one or two episodes and which is when she realized that she had this love and passion for acting she did some small roles um between the years of 2001 and 2003 it's very interesting and crazy to know that like at such young ages people can be aware of what it is that is their true calling some people can know from a very 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 young age what excites them what interests them for me i think when i knew that my passion was to talk and inspire people in in being open-minded and being opinionated was probably when i was like 15 or 16 but knowing that i wanted to do music was definitely since I was a very young one and any of my family can vouch for me which is very interesting that passion and that that calling has never left and I think the same thing happened to Miley probably thinking what she was a very young girl when she realized that she wanted to act how is that possible some people know they're calling straight away some people it takes experiences it takes trials and tribulations to figure out what's for you when Miley was 11 years old she auditioned for Hannah Montana that's absolutely insane when I found that out I was like hold on 11 years old 11 you're not even a teenager yet 11 right after 10 bitch we're now having double digits 11 11. What? Okay, so fun fact, not many people know, she actually auditioned for the role of Lily, aka the best friend. Miley didn't audition to be Hannah Montana, the leading role, she auditioned to be Lily. That is the most craziest thing I've heard all week. Well, the week has just started, but it's a crazy <laughs> I can't imagine Miley being Lily, and let's just say Lily would have been Miley. This showed how much potential, charisma, and star quality she exuded from such a young age. So imagine what it would be like if she took more, you know, acting lessons. Obviously, practice makes perfect, right? If we think there's a star in her already, imagine what she can be like in a year's time, in two years' time. D Mark. <laughs> I'm Miley Cyrus, I'm with CED, and I'm auditioning for the role of Zoe in Hannah Montana. Bye bye, how could I let you go? I'm a Mia, here I go again. Bye bye, how can I resist ya? I love rock and roll. This is the audition that got her picked from over a thousand others to play the role of Hannah. So come and take some time and dance with me. Ow! Miley was fortunate enough to have her real dad appear in Hannah Montana as well as her father too. My heart will let you go. 
and I need you to know I miss you. Sha la 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 la, I miss you. I'm coming out here at night. It's a good place to try and figure things out. Would I love to work with my dad on set? for hours and hours and hours. I have to go home and see him. Yeah, I don't know personally, but I do think there's obviously advantages to that. You feel more comfortable and set. Imagine at the age of 11, you are constantly around, you know, adults and people just telling you, say this, do this, act like this. It's good to have familiar faces. The show is practically blowing up with viewers, people captivated by an intriguing storyline. Normal girl, high school girl, Switches to what? A superstar with just one flipping item, a wig. Now, I was gonna be extra and get my blonde wig upstairs, but quite frankly, I can't be bothered. I know that whilst editing, I'm probably gonna live to regret having that iconic moment, but this is iconic enough, you know? Just the power of a wig. This is before lace fronts, this is before closures. This was just a wig that looked very, very, very unnatural. The only reason why Hannah's wig didn't look even more natural is because of the fringe. Like Stefiana, she wasn't um, stale, like that loaf of bread. That is in the back of your cupboard. A fringe is always gonna be a game changer for a flippin' synthetic wig. Do I think the wig was that wig could not have been human hair? Not me discussing wigs for 10 minutes straight. Hannah Montana went on to have four seasons between 2006 and 2011. Many people were mad at it. Many people were threatened by it. Miley Cyrus was the it girl. I can't lie to you. Like, Miley Cyrus would always be smiling on red carpets, you know, acting like royalty, doing the most. Remember the dresses they used to wear um, on red carpets, like the little bandeau thing? It basically looked like prom dresses. Everyone calling your name, Miley, Miley, to the left, to the right. That must have been very fun, especially as a teenager, like, all this attention being on you. Of course, your father's had the same thing, but, like, finally having the limelight be on you i'm sure my good sis was living for it now i'm going to talk about something very important not many people actually know about this i knew about it because again i was obsessed with disney channel that was my life nickelodeon yeah i would basically cheat on nickelodeon with disney like i claim to be a nickelodeon girl i claim to have loved it first but we both know that's a lie what many people don't know is that there is a four season rule so basically shows only go up to four seasons you know like where's waverly plays um that's a raven thing is inferred now i find it very annoying that the disney doesn't continue on if a show is really good i don't feel there should be an obligation to end it at the fourth season and a lot of people on the internet have actually you know stressed their opinion about how they think is annoying when shows just end randomly the reason why disney channel would typically end a show at the fourth season is because to sum it up, they were a little bit greedy, but in a sense, they wanted people to just like, you know, have their careers, of, you know, for four years or so, and then move on to other things and just like, you know, bring a fresh new wave and a fresh new people, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, at the same time, whether you want to see it this way or not, let's put ourselves in this situation. Imagine you are an actress, an actor, want to admit it or not, you see Miley Cyrus doing her thing and killing it, but you're seeing that Disney, you're seeing their shows that are popular and shows that are just there. If these people who already have, you know, household names, can move on to the next step now. I think that's completely fine. But I also just felt like a lot of shows ended abruptly and that was my big issue. So many shows ended such as I beat the Jonas Brothers. And the reason for that one in specific, I was very shocked by it, is because of the fact that iCarly was reigning. It was doing its thing on Nickelodeon and people felt as though like this is trying to be a replica of iCarly, hence the I in front of it. It definitely was very noticeable. <laughs> Other shows like Lizzie McGuire, the reason why Lizzie McGuire actually didn't continue on is because of the fact that um, Hilary Duff wasn't happy with her pay. She had to go back and forth with the Disney um, production team and everything, which is completely fine. Like if you feel like you've been overworked and you're not receiving the amount that you solemnly feel like you deserve, then you have every right to voice your opinion. And I'm happy that at such a young age, she did that. A lot of people love to take advantage of child stars. I don't know how to feel about child stars, but Actually, I do. I don't like the fact that this child stars. I think it's way too young. I think you're deprived of your whole entire youth. I mean, we've seen it with Justin Bieber. We saw it happen to Billie Eilish. I think it's calmed down now. But God only knows what it would have been like if Billie wasn't with her family constantly, you know? Um, we've seen it with Lindsay Lohan. Some of a chance didn't continue. So random. Good luck, Charlie. Pranksters. Girl Meets World. Shake It Up. Corey in the House. And many more. You guys can go and find the list on Google. Like, you'll be shocked that so many shows that we all loved or we just saw when we were scrolling by it didn't continue on it didn't give us the best ending either season four was renamed hannah montana forever as it was you know purposely done to solidify the ending of a chapter the end of a road and i think that that was the most emotional thing ever when i knew oh my god hannah montana was definitely top five okay 
and she was at number five. <laughs> I remember my childhood, like I remember certain things of it. Some things are unclear and some things are very clear. I remember after school, I didn't do my homework first. At 4.30 UK time, a bitch would come home. Yeah, throw my bag on the chair, go and sit up, get the remote, the sky remote, ah, the sky remote control and do 609. Who remembers that? 609, 610. Oh my goodness. This new generation, they only know about Bizarre Vark and Jake Paul. What? In high school musical the series baby i mean okay when i first found out that hannah montana forever was coming to an end it brought some tears to my eyes it was the fact that her friends didn't know that she was hannah montana bitch how could you not know come on like it was just all of these funny things which were low-key cringe at the same time that made my childhood and if it wasn't for disney channel then i genuinely don't know what i would have been doing at such a young age wow disney had so much impact in our lives and we don't even realize it half the time hannah montana forever was such a like a really sad time for a lot of us because we knew there was there's only gonna be like 13 episodes in this season. Whilst we're speaking about Hannah Montana, who did we ship her with? Jesse and Jake. I was not a big fan of Miley and Jake. That might be an unpopular opinion. I might hear some outrage in the comments. I was more so like a Miley and Jesse guy. I mean, the badass vibes. He's fine as F. Jake is just out here doing the most. He looks like he could be her brother once she puts that wig on. I thought she should have went with Jesse because Jesse was the type of person who didn't really like admit how we felt about people but he did for miley bitch i would have taken that in a heartbeat hannah montana forever is a monumental part i'm not gonna lie to you the best episode had to be the last one when she went to college i'm miley i'm your new roommate after hannah montana forever she then went on to do some other shows such as lol hannah montana the movie the last song so undercover whilst things seem to have always worked in her favor miley actually lost out on a role to selena gomez she was meant to be in ramona and Beezus. let's talk about the disney channel girlies beefing it is so great to finally meet you i really am a huge fan yeah i hate you thanks i feel the exact same what? A lot of people online love to run that headline, that narrative of, oh, all the people are beefing each other, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Not many people were responding. Selena Gomez hardly retaliated or, or responded or spoke. She just kept it cute and classy. She has been media trained since the get-go. Whoever is working with Selena Gomez, they have her media trained. And you know what? There's plenty of advantages in that, but it's also disadvantages too, because I imagine that there's things being said behind the scenes, and you guys know me. I love me some good pop culture, so sometimes silence isn't always the best way forward, but you know what? It's worked out for Selena Gomez, so... Both Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez practically grew up together on Disney Channel and I'm sure they experienced more or less the same things and they were known as being frenemies and this all started back in 2006. So if we rewind back into 2006, what did Disney Channel look like? Arguing allegedly over like petty feuds with, you know, friends, petty feuds with boys. <coughs> Nick Jonas. How you doing? Bye bye, have a good day. You know, your fans are going crazy to know about you and Nick, so what's the real deal? Are. What's the real deal yes. on that? Huh? Are you guys just good friends? Yes. Seems like you smile pretty big when I say the name Nick. What? You're in love with Nick, right? Come on, you can tell. I can. Doesn't Nick think you're the most beautiful woman in the world? I think he does, doesn't he? Okay guys, so I actually forgot to mention this earlier, but around this time, Selena Gomez was doing a lot of interviews and people were asking her, is she dating anybody? People did have a feeling it was Nick Jonas, but they wanted her to obviously say it and, you know, hear it from her verbally. Um, Selena Gomez actually didn't really mention who it was that she was dating, but she did say in some interviews that she was just hanging out with Nick Jonas and that she's dating someone, but she didn't specify who it was. So when people found out later on that it was Nick Jonas, people felt like she was being snaky and being secretive because she didn't want Miley Cyrus to know about it. Honestly and truly, I don't think that was her intention. I do feel as though if there is such an intimate moment of your life that you don't put out there, then so be it. Nick Jonas was like the eye candy for a lot of people. In 2019, Miley Cyrus jokingly tweeted both Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez. She said, I love you, Selena, but I listen to Demi. And this was intended to be a joke. She changed the original song lyrics, which was, I love you, Nikki, but I listen to Cardi. And that's a song from her single called Catitude. As you can imagine, Nikki fans were heated up and it didn't have the nicest things to say about Miley Cyrus. And you know, Miley Cyrus and Nikki have gone back and forth, which we're going to touch upon. Also to the end of the video, I do want to know why she tweeted that, but guess we'll never have the answers. Miley stated that they were in love. We became boyfriend and girlfriends the same day we met. Now, what in the name of love is that? 
No, seriously, according to Seventeen magazine, he was on a quest to meet me and he was like, I think you're beautiful and I really like you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I like you so much. I'm sorry, but that sounds so childish. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is like two days later after filming the footage that you just saw just now. I'm back, I'm basically like wearing the same outfit. The lighting is a bit better. It's not completely blinding my face, but I was actually really under weather, so I couldn't film. I'm not sipping on a smoothie anymore. I'm actually sipping on this. I wanted to sip on alcohol for the first episode and have like a little cheers moment, but it's just not happening. Yeah, we're gonna still continue where we left off. I think the last I had been speaking about was Miley, Selena Gomez and Nick Jonas. I remember when Miley was performing Seven Things. I think it was Teen Choice Awards and <laughs> She went up to Selena Gomez, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know whether Selena Gomez didn't clock what was happening. All I'm gonna say is that Miley Cyrus is a savage, Miley is shady, and that's on that. Now, do I think that Miley genuinely hated Selena Gomez? I think at one point she probably did, because she probably felt like, why are you taking my man? Especially when you're young, you'd be doing the most, you'd be acting out sometimes, just to act out. So I do think that once upon a time she probably really genuinely hated Selena Gomez, but I don't think she actually knew the definition of hate, let's keep it real. But I think Selena Gomez hated Miley, no, but I do think that she probably has some words to say about her behind closed doors. I like Selena Gomez, but I do wish that sometimes it wouldn't be outlet saying it. I wish that direct source would come from Selena Gomez because I genuinely know how she would have worded things. Now, I don't think Selena Gomez had any loyalty per se to Miley Cyrus. I don't think that she should have like automatically not dated Nick Jonas because he went out with Miley to begin with. I don't think they were really friends like that. I mean, if it was like her going after like Demi's boyfriend, then yeah, that's completely different because they were more closer. Miley and Selena Gomez just always seemed like people who were just on the same network. He did hang out a couple of times, but it didn't seem like it was as close as it was for Demi and Selena. Now okay. maybe that came to a threat for Miley. I don't know what Miley was thinking, but I do know that when you're young and you're a teenage girl and, and it's all based on image and looks and looking pretty and sometimes having a click, yes. Before I continue on with the whole, you know, timeline, there's something very important I need to share. Miley Cyrus Vanity Fair topless scandal. Entertainment Tonight was first to show you the shots and we broke the story about her embarrassment. Well now, new details emerge. So, so what most people don't know, but should know is that when a magazine outlet reaches out to you, they usually, you know, showcase some of their ideas and do a pitch basically. Vanity Fair would have probably pitched an idea to Miley and her team. Of course Miley's taken it and said yes I want to do this but at the same time you have to remember grown ass people had the idea for Miley Cyrus to be topless or to be nude when she wasn't even nude like she had a blanket over her covering the front of her. Is that that big of a deal? No. I mean at the age of 15 there's plenty of other ideas you could have come up with but is that the worst thing that's ever happened on the planet? No. Were people being dramatic? Yes. It's a bit like Britney Spears when people tried to control her and make it seem like everything she'd been doing in her teenage years was the worst thing ever when in reality that's what we're doing now. Yeah. The slander and scrutiny was only directed towards her. Plenty of people were voicing their concerns and they were slut shaming Miley Cyrus and calling her all types of names which became a threat to the Disney network. Miley Cyrus had to then issue an apology. I respect Miley for years later saying that I didn't want to do that. Like I'm not going to apologize for putting myself out there. I think Miley's always had this sense of like carefreeness about her since a young age which can be admired. Sometimes it can get you in trouble. Sometimes it's just like time and place, read the room. But for the most part Miley has always exuded confidence and boldness and I think that a lot of people are intrigued by it but a lot of people are also scared by somebody who's really sure of themselves and confident and comfortable in their own skin. I also want to talk about another moment within Miley's career that I think a lot of people really 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 had a heavy opinion on for whatever reason. In 2009, Miley Cyrus performed her smash hit, Party in the USA, which was actually written by Jessie J. How many of you guys knew that? Not only Jessie J though, it was also Dr. Luke and Claude Kelly. She performed it at an award show and used a stripping pole as a prop. Many people weren't happy with the visible transition of Miley Cyrus. You can try and block kids from doing certain things and from viewing certain things, but they're just gonna do it. There's always so much you as a parent or guardian or adult can say to a child, again, I think she was ahead of her time. Let's return back to the timeline. In 2010, the What Do You Mean singer Justin Bieber performed Overboard. If you guys have watched the Never Say Never movie, then you guys know what song I'm talking about and what clip I'm talking about, but I will put it on the screen for you guys. The pair was seen as like, you know, being flirtatious or just being overly dramatic and pretending that this will be the last time they'll see each other before the ship goes down like Titanic. <laughs> 
I don't really see it as flirtatious, I can't lie. Chemistry sells. It's like Drake and Nicki Minaj. Nicki even said in an interview, she wasn't really trying to entertain Drake or anything, but they both know what works for them. They know what the audience like to see. And it's just a bit of banter anyway. So I think the same thing was happening with um, Justin and Miley. Shortly after, Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez started dating. Many noticed that whilst Justin and Selena Gomez were romantically in relations, Justin was never seen around Miley. Miley and Justin were then seen out hanging together after the breakup between Selena and Justin. They had allegedly recorded a song together, which was very difficult to find, I have to admit. The song I think is called, oh yeah, it's called Hashtag Twerk. As somebody who is heavily into like pop culture and swears that I remember every single moment, I don't remember this moment. So when I went to go and research and I actually heard the song Twerk, sounds like a lot of drugs. Seeing how everything unfolded and hearing Miley and Justin saying they were on drugs and doing things that were causing more harm to their body made me realize they were both in a horrible state. Selena Gomez kept quiet and she never responded. And there was a moment in 2013 when Miley threw a cardboard cutout um, of Selena Gomez while singing her song from her album, F You. There's been plenty of people like, you know what, she didn't know it, it was Selena Gomez's face. I'm sure she did. I mean, what are the odds? Let's keep it real. I'm not trying to paint my size out to be a bitch or whatever. You're playing a song on your album called F You whilst... But wait a second, why is someone turning up to your concert with Selena Gomez's cardboard cutout? I think we should have words for that person. In 2014, the Much Music Awards took place and Selena Gomez was awarded for favorite international artist. Miley felt as though it was rigged as she tweeted this cryptic message stating, wigged, wilting, wis whack, was saying. Asked Miley thought that she was coding, we're all smart and we realized that that's not what it meant. She thought she was discreet, but she wasn't discreet enough because the tweet actually translated, rigged voting is whack, just saying. Now, five years later, in 2019, they put their petty past behind them. Miley posted a video of her Selena Gomez singing seven things in March, 2019. Selena Gomez commented saying, from back Thursday, such babies. Yay for maturity and yay for coexisting. I appreciate that. Let's talk about when the hate increased. <laughs> In a docu-series Miley did with MTV in 2013, it was revealed that it was in fact Pharrell's idea to get Miley Cyrus to have a makeover, change hairstyle, outfits and demeanor and just come with a complete new look. Miley trusted and respected the opinion of Pharrell as he is a music mogul who has worked with legendary artists but was also a good friend of hers. Pharrell actually produced a large percentage of bangers. A lot of you guys were around to witness the bangers era and I'm sure a lot of you guys had your opinion about it. My opinion was always that, okay, Okay, this is different. That don't look like Hannah Montana. But I never crucified it because she was making good music. She was featured on a song with Pharrell titled Come Get It Bay. Pharrell says he was inspired by Miley Cyrus when he was writing blurred lines for Robin Thicke. In an interview he said, I had Elle Sweatshirt in a room and Miley Cyrus in the other. I was doing a bunch of country sounding music with Miley. It was the work of Miley Cyrus that inspired the track. It was like blending this country sound with up-tempo groove. Going from long ashy brown hair to a platinum blonde with a pixie cut and shaved sides. Miley's hairstylist said, Miley and I had been texting inspiration shots back and forth. So I already knew I was going to do an undercar. I was traveling to New York for work, so we decided to meet there. I got a room at the Mercer where I could cut her hair in private. She said, let's do this. I had to bleach her hair to make it more edgy. This means that Miley was very, very much aware of the new aesthetic she'd been going for. That's when I had called P and I was like, what would you think if I cut my hair, did it short, did it blonde? And he was like, I think you would look dope. Anyway, you do your hair. Throughout this entire process, I've just been like, yes, yes. Continue to do what you want to do and how you want to do it. Right off that phone call, I took the train to New York. My hairstylist was in there, and I just said, shave my head, dye me blonde. Like, I need to, like, let go of, of, like, a pass in a way because I felt like we need to see change. Everything that happens, we need to see for our own eyes. I just felt like I had this whole new attitude. Even in the 2013 documentary of MTV, she said that, you know, the next movie will probably be a mullet. And what is she going to do? A mullet. Here, it's a little bit of Billy Ray Cyrus, 1989. Oh, set. The mullet back. The mullet, yeah. There was also sources that said that around this time, she started going to the gym a lot more, especially because she knew that she was gonna be touring within the same year. Miley Cyrus was twerking a lot, which is a dance move that dates back to 1820, which Oxford claims. According to other sources, twerking originated in New Orleans in the late 1980s, which came out of the bounce music era. I'm not sure how much of that is true. There's plenty of different sources. You've even got sources saying that, 
I'm, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my mic off of this part. I'm taking, look, I'm taking it out. You've even got sources saying that Miley Cyrus started twerking. She is the originator for twerk. I had to start her right there. Miley Cyrus is the originator for twerking. In what century has that ever made sense? And I, oh. All right, let me put it back on. Are you dumb or stupid? Pick your fighter. You know what's so funny though? We've been twerking in parties and clubs. But it's always seen as inappropriate. Whining is always also seen as inappropriate. Like, come on, you can't have your cake and eat it. If you're mad at a black woman for twerking, bitch, be mad at her too, okay? Now, of course, my Cyrus did this, you know, face the scrutiny. According to MerriamWebster.com, twerking is a sexually subjective dance. Categorize rapid... <laughs> Sorry, what? Categorize rapid, repeated hip thrusts and shaking of the ass while squatting. I genuinely thought it was originating in the Caribbean, but there's plenty of different sources online. I couldn't actually find where twerking started from. So if anybody out there is better than Google and more smart than Google, let me know. So when my star started twerking, apparently many white girls started to shake, shake what their mother gave, gave you. you this behavior. Behavior. Ooh, I just apparently people started flipping their backs. Who said that? Which one of you said it? Miley Cyrus is going through her rebellious phase, which low-key is still a current theme for artists to date. Many tend to do that by interfering and taking elements that make the black culture the black culture. White people typically reap the benefits, whilst black women deal with the consequences. And again, my favorite word for today's video, the scrutiny. Insane. It's absolutely insane. And I know people watching right now can relate to it. And it's so unfair because it's like you want to rock a hairstyle and you're seen as, oh, that ish must be dirty. Oh, it doesn't look clean. It looks absolutely ratchet. That's the favorite word people love to use to describe black women. What does it mean? Please let me know. How do you spell it? And then when a white person goes to do something that's close enough to it, or the very same thing, like when Kim did cornrows, people are like, oh my God, what's this hairstyle called? I want to do that. Black women have been doing it. It's been floating around on Pinterest as well and Tumblr, but you deliberately clicked away from it. But when you saw Kim do it, oh yeah, don't think that I don't see it. I've been peeping it. Low key, I mean high key, I've been peeped that you like, I've been peeping. So some examples such as Christina Aguilera in Cornrows, she needed a new look. Why is it, it kind of is seen like when people need a new look, they often take elements from the black culture. Now I've seen some uncultured vultures out there saying stuff like, what culture? Bitch, let me tell it to you. You got time? These are conversations that people don't want to talk about, but luckily I'm not people, I'm Keisha and we're going to do it regardless, okay? We've all gathered here to gain some knowledge about something. So here we are. Justin Timberlake sure as hell did it. I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of feel a bit iffy about Justin Timberlake, especially with that whole Janet Jackson thing when he removed her item of clothing. Not showing any remorse. And when he called black people ethnic, it's just like, bitch, just say black. America's, you know, unfairly harsh on ethnic people i didn't handle it the best way i could have i do believe people can grow and change like if i support anybody now especially publicly it's because i do believe that people have changed but justin timberlake has always given me sketchy vibes and with the whole britney thing as well oh yeah oh yeah i have to i have to cultural appropriation the word has been overused and abused for a very long time opinions vary i'm going to share my opinion with you guys wearing braids cornrows etc is typically grouped within the black community and culture it's been proven that when you purchase hair extensions and you as a white person tries to or you as a person who is not black let's put it like that tries to attach braiding hair to your scalp i'm gonna wish you the best it is typically made for thicker hair i have um thick 4b 4c hair when i wear braids i don't find it to be an issue i even know people who are black who have thinner hair you ask them oh what happened to braids i take it out it was irritating my scalp it's too heavy on my head yeah you, you know do whatever it is that makes you happy i don't personally have a problem with that i have a problem with the whole picking and choosing what benefits you and then when it comes to you taking such a big part because hair is such a big part of you and your identity it shouldn't be the biggest factor as to who you are but it's a very big part of who you are as a woman as a man or whatever you identify as okay my issue personally is like the whole you know i'm gonna dip my toes in here and take this and then drop that it's the whole not giving credit it pisses me off another thing is tiktok like bro a lot of these dancers started from black creators. Give them credit. Put them on because you have the platform too. Nothing's going to change for you apart from the fact people are actually going to respect you. Respect is something that people say they want, but respect is earned. This is my opinion. You go to another black person, their opinion could be very different. I don't have a problem with people wearing braids. I've seen it in person once when I was going to like, I was in shopping, I've seen it in person. I'm just not used to it. Am I gonna go up to a girl and tell her, oh, take this out of your hair? No. Cameras and box braids are completely different, by the way. So cameras are gonna suit majority of people's hair. Um, but when it comes to box braids, because it is quite heavy on the scalp, because they drop instead of cameras when they go backwards, it's not gonna be suitable and comfortable for everybody. And that's why some people take their hair out within like two weeks, sometimes even three days. Give credit where credit is due. If you were inspired by somebody or something, say it. 
don't be like the kardashians out here saying oh my god it's called boxer braids bitch what do stuff graciously miley made an insensitive comment in regards to the hip-hop world which she later apologized for now let's move on to the whole statement miley was good the iconic moment at the 2015 vma and now back to this bitch that had a lot to say about me the other day in the press miley what's good hey we're all in this industry we all do interviews and we all know how they manipulate nikki congratulations Plenty of rumors had been floating around. It also looks like at the end, Nicki Minaj was about to smile and laugh. But I think it was scripted. I don't think so. I do believe that Mali has said something about Nicki. I think it was kind of weird how like Nicki was still trying to say something and then Mali was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I swear that was the last good award show. Now, let's move on to the conclusion. Miley Cyrus is a very outspoken and opinionated woman, which sometimes goes too far. And, you know, I've listed many examples in today's video. Like, Miley Cyrus doesn't always word things in the best way possible, but I do stand the fact that sometimes she is misunderstood. When someone is the first to break and push a, a new narrative and change the way people look and, and change the way people think, it can be scary, but if someone is brave enough to do it, then just accept it. I've always had a soft spot for Miley Cyrus as I've always felt that she exuded confidence, control, and edge. She stood out as one of the Disney girls who was able to stay relevant. Miley's vocals, I think, get overlooked a lot. I've been watching a lot of her live performances. I really appreciated her music back in 2013. I know she was, like, not doing the best. I really appreciated it. And, of course, this new era of Miley Cyrus and this raspy edge this raspy like country rock vibe i really appreciate it i'm, I'm curious to know what's going to happen too soon do i think we're going to get a bangers 2.0 Bitch, it's Miley Cyrus, you never know what to expect. Miley's vocals have massively improved. Now, my favorite cover of Miley's is Gimme More, which is a Britney Spears song that she covered, I think it was last year. Public display of affection. Public display of affection. She's so hard, bro. She's so lit. Feels like get so overlooked she's so talented she's more than just somebody who just got out of a relationship with somebody she's more than just somebody who twerked at the vma is like bitch it's miley cyrus put some respect on her name i think there was a time where i did feel like she knew how to really properly control and use her voice but she worked on it and there's nothing much you can say about miley cyrus now um again this new era that she's given to us one of her best eras as well vocally she sounds impeccable locals get gas when miley cyrus has a note for seven seconds What's new? Whenever she sings Jolene, I swear, all the locals come out and they're like, oh my god, Miley Cyrus can sing, bitch, what? Some of Miley's best music are the songs that don't have any visuals, which is interesting. Her voice has always been unique and interesting to me. Again, it's, it's very weird to see that in the beginning her voice was high and to hear it now being like, I love when she does the low notes. I love it because there's not many like pop girlies who do that anymore. The conspiracy is that she's finally taking power and she's finally doing the things that she couldn't do as a kid. I mean, all the pictures that she's posting of Hannah Montana and like, you know, just sending out the cards and stuff. And just the other day, it was the anniversary, like 15 years of Hannah. That's insane, bro. I feel, sh I sure as hell feel really old, I can't lie. The conspiracy is that with her new Instagram, it's been kind of like, huh, what is she posting this for? It's been on that for a hot moment, but I think she's really now just like taken in the fact that, oh my God, this was my life. This is what I experienced. I did this cool things. Um, and I'm now taking pictures and I'm now doing things that I couldn't do when I was younger because I was boxed. Not because of my age per se, because people are out here doing the, the most. Mm, you, bitch, let me know if you can go there. But that's pretty much it for today's video. What did you guys learn in today's video? What was an interesting fact that I shared with you? There's plenty of things whilst researching that I was like, huh? Let me know who you guys want to see in the next episode. I do have some ideas. If anything screams my name, I will probably go ahead and do that next. But I do have some upcoming videos. I do have a bunch of different people planned for this series. So yeah, next time, hopefully I can be drinking some alcohol. And hopefully next time I can try and like shush up the background. I promise you every episode is going to be something new added, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Miley Cyrus, when love quickly turns to hate.